Hey there, bio team. In today's video, we're going to be covering the process of speciation. Speciation is one of the key concepts of evolution, and it's pretty cool because it allows all sorts of weird and wacky creatures to develop. In this video, we'll discuss what speciation is with a little example. Then we'll have a look at the different types of speciation that exist, allopatric, sympatric, and parapatric. Let's get started. Put simply, speciation is the formation of a new and distinct species in the course of evolution. But how does this happen? Well, speciation tends to begin when individuals from the same species become isolated from each other. There are lots of different ways individuals can be isolated from each other. We'll use the most common isolation method as our example. That's geographic isolation. For example, when the Grand Canyon formed, it separated a population of squirrels into two. Okay, so now we've got a population of squirrels either side of the canyon. One on the north of the canyon and one on the south. Individuals from these two populations are unable to breed with individuals from the other population. Time for them to start cranking up a few of Ed Sheeran's heartbreak songs or some Taylor Swift if you prefer. The technical term for being unable to breed is reproductive isolation. This means that the allele frequencies in the two populations will change independently of each other. Now, even though they originated from the same population, these two new populations have a couple of major differences. The gene pools of each population are different due to natural genetic variation between individuals and genetic drift. In other words, the individuals possess different combinations of alleles. And secondly, the selection pressures either side of the canyon are different because the environment is slightly different. The selection pressures involve temperature and food availability. This means that natural selection favoured different phenotypes in each population. In other words, the traits that are advantageous will vary in each environment. For example, the north side of the canyon experiences colder winters and more rain and snow than the south. This means that squirrels with thick fur are going to be more advantageous if they live on the north side of the canyon compared to if they live on the south. What I'm trying to say is that the traits will be selected for and the alleles that will become more frequent in the gene pool will be different for each population. Okay, so now we've got an idea that gene pools of each population are getting increasingly different. But how do we reach the point where we can say that the gene pool of a population has changed enough to be called a new species? How can we define at which point speciation has occurred? The term species is quite a fluid word. But we tend to say that organisms from the same species are those that are able to interbreed to produce fertile offspring. So, when the organisms in one population are unable to successfully breed with organisms from the other population, we say that speciation has occurred and a new taxonomic group has been formed. We can do this by comparing the gene pools of the populations we're interested in. We could look at different populations living in different places, like the two squirrel populations in the example above, or at different times which could involve looking at the changes in the gene pool of the same population over thousands of years. Essentially, we use the genetic information of two populations to see if they'd be able to produce fertile offspring together. If not, they can be classed as different species. Now, that's the general process of speciation. Let's take a closer look at the specific types of speciation you've got to know. Allopatric, sympatric and parapatric. Don't worry, it's not too complicated. The types just differ depending on how the individuals are isolated. First up, allopatric speciation. Allopatric speciation occurs when populations of a species become geographically isolated from each other. This tends to be due to a physical barrier like an ocean, river, mountain range or desert. These barriers could form due to environmental disasters like earthquakes and floods or even direct human involvement, like habitat fragmentation, which is when human activities like deforestation can cause a large habitat, such as a rainforest, to be split into separate sections. Allopatric speciation could also occur due to spatial isolation. This is just when individuals from a population become separated by really huge distances, or when they inhabit different parts of an area. 
This might happen if the seeds of an alpine tree population are carried particularly far away one year due to unusually high winds, and a new population colonises. Due to the distance between them, the two tree populations are unable to breed with each other in the following years. Whether it's geographic or spatial isolation, the individuals just wouldn't come into contact with each other. Okay, so the squirrel example we just looked at is a form of allopatric speciation. The result of this is that the proportion of different genotypes in each population changes independently of the other. Individuals will develop adaptations according to their local conditions. And over time, the two populations may become so genetically different that they can't interbreed to produce fertile offspring and a separate species. Now let's take a look at sympatric speciation. This occurs when organisms live in the same place but are still reproductively isolated. There could be several reasons why individuals don't breed with each other. One example is that they might have different breeding patterns. In fact, there are four different types of frog, the wood frog, the pickerel frog, the tree frog and the bullfrog that live in the same forest but have different seasons of mating activity. The wood frog gets hustling around March and April, but it's all hustled out by May and June when the tree frog is active. So even though they're the same species, these two frog types will never get to interbreed and there will be no gene flow between the populations. This is called temporal isolation, when the breeding season of two populations don't coincide. Over time, these four different populations could evolve and develop such genetic differences that they wouldn't be able to successfully breed and therefore be a separate species. Finally, let's stop off at parapatric speciation. Here, there's no specific physical barrier to breeding, so populations are capable of interbreeding. But individuals don't really mate randomly. They're more likely to mate with individuals geographically close to them. Parapatric speciation is very rare and occurs when there is a dramatic change in habitat from one nearby location to another, like a population of grasses that spans along a shoreline, for example. In this environment, the selection pressures undergo a huge change in a relatively small area as you move away from the sea. And as we know, this means different traits will be selected for in different areas. This means a gradient of favourable characteristics would form as the habitat changes. Like with allopatric speciation and sympatric speciation, parapatric speciation involves a lack of gene flow in the population. There is some gene flow, but this only tends to occur locally. And because there are varying selection pressures across the population due to the change in habitat, genetic information in different subgroups of the population would change. Eventually, individuals in the subgroups wouldn't be able to interbreed and produce fertile offspring anyway. They're now a new species. Time for a recap. Speciation is due to some kind of reproductive isolation, which leads to a lack of gene flow between populations of a species. Over time, the gene pools in each population develop independently, according to different selection pressures. And we say that speciation has occurred when the genetic differences between individuals from each population are so great that they wouldn't be able to interbreed to produce fertile offspring, even if they were able to mingle again. There are different types of speciation. Let's sum up what each one is. Allopatric speciation is where a population is separated by a physical barrier, which prevents gene flow. It's due to geographic isolation or spatial isolation. Sympatric speciation occurs when there's no physical barrier. Organisms live in the same area but can't interbreed due to reasons such as differences in behaviour. Parapatric speciation occurs when organisms live in the same general area but are more likely to reproduce with individuals close by. A gradient of characteristics develops. I'll leave you with a quick way to remember the main difference between the different types of speciation. Allo sounds a bit like Alps. Here, imagine a mountain dividing two populations. And sim sounds like same. Think about species developing in the same place. Para is a bit like panorama. Panoramas involve everything in the same place, but they take a sweeping view of the area and one landscape fades into the next 
a bit like the characteristics of individuals. That's all we've got time for here. Bye for now.